So you spent some time learning the minor pentatonic scale, and maybe by now you know a tasty lick or two, but you're trying to figure out how can you make it sound fast and cool like all of our favorite rock guitar players do? Well, in this video, we're gonna learn the ways that you can increase your pentatonic speed by a lot. Just be sure to stick around to the very end of the lesson because I've also got a free gift for you and your guitar that you're both gonna love. So the minor pentatonic scale, we know it, we love it, you know? So let's take, for example, the E minor pentatonic scale right here in this particular box. Uh, 12 to 15, 12 to 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15. So this being a two note per string box makes it a little bit interesting when it comes to playing fast because especially when you're you know new to learning scales, typically you wanna go that linear route of just ascending and then descending, right? And because this is two notes per string, makes it a little bit tough to just rapidly go up and down the scale. And so we kind of tend to think that like maybe, you know, in order to play the pentatonic scale fast, we gotta do something like this. And that's all fine and good. I mean, it's rewarding if you're able to go up and down the pentatonic scale, you know, faster but you're still just going up and down the scale. So there's a whole lot more that we wanna be able to get. So we're gonna explore ways that you can really squeeze the juice out of the pentatonic scale and get a whole lot more out of it just by using two concepts, repeating licks and sequences. So let's start with some repeating licks. Let's take a look at some repeating licks that we can learn on the pentatonic scale. What's great about it is that it's literally a very, very simple lick, usually just a handful of notes played in a certain order, right? And then just repeat it over and over again. So let's take, for example, this tried and true, you know, repeater lick right here it goes like this. Right, you've heard it a million times in all kinds of different great records, you know. And what we're doing here is really simple. We're just doing a three note lick that's just repeated a bunch of times. So for example, starting on the 15th fret of the high E string, right? And we're, you can use your, either your pinky, right? Or your ring finger for this one. And then our index finger here is barring the 12th fret on the B and the high E strings, okay? So we're keeping that bar throughout the entirety of this repeater lick, right? So you can just pretend like you just glued your finger to the fretboard there. And then using your ring finger or your pinky, you're gonna start on the 15th fret of the high E string. And you're going to start by picking that note and then pulling off. So you're doing a pull off where you're flicking your finger off the string. You're not just removing it from the string, you're literally like flicking it off, right? And in doing that, you're able to trigger the string and allow the sustain to uh, be a little bit louder than you would otherwise. So you're gonna do that, and then you're gonna pick the 12th fret on the B string that you're already fretting because your first finger is barring those two strings. So it's just like this. Three moves, right? One, two, three. One, two, three. We're picking on the 15th fret, then pulling off the 12th fret, and then picking the 12th fret on the B string. That's it, those three moves. One, two, three. That's essentially the whole lick, right? But what we're doing is we're repeating it. So you wanna get the hang of a lick like this, right? Get comfortable with playing it at a slow speed, right? You wanna start slow and steady, because that wins the race, right? And then when you're able to play it, you know, at, at a slower tempo, but with, with much better accuracy, then you're able to build up speed and maintain that accuracy. What you don't wanna do is right off the bat, start playing these licks too fast, and then it's gonna become unintelligible and sloppy, right? So you wanna start being able to play that nice and clear, and then just repeat it slowly. Right, and then you gradually increase speed. And as far as picking it, you know, especially as you increase speed, this is what I'm doing, right? So it's a downstroke on that. It's a downstroke on that uh, high E string. Then there's a pull off. And then while we're doing that pull off, it gives your picking hand time to move up to be ready to downstroke on the um, B string. And what's happening is as you increase speed, you're doing this downstroke thing, right? Where you're going. So it's like down, 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 down. Remember, there's no picking going on during a pull-off. So it's down, 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 down. And so you're just doing this kind of like steady. 
you know, kind of like percussive thing with your picking hand. So that's why as you're increasing speed, it's getting into like freebird territory, you know. <laughs> But you have to start off playing it nice and slow. And make sure it's slow and perfect, right? So you wanna pick the tempo that's, let's say the fastest you can play it where it's perfect, which is gonna be slow in the beginning, right? But you wanna increase, if you're practicing to a metronome, increase in increments of five BPM. So if you're starting at a slow BPM and then you're building up, you know, the, the speed on this, you wanna move in increments of five. To me, that's the most effective and gradual way, but you're able to see results like within a week if you were to like document your, you know, day one of practicing this lick, for example, and then, and then working with a metronome, working up that increasing that BPM in increments of five, then by day seven, at the end of the week, when you take video of yourself, you're gonna notice a massive difference. And you probably wouldn't even notice a difference if you didn't document your progress from that first day up until that seventh day. That's what's great about these slow, gradual builds and why it's important to document your progress. And this particular repeater lick doesn't have to be limited just to the high E and B strings. You can do it, let's say, up here from the 15th fret to the 12th fret on the B and the G string. <laughs> Sounds kind of cool there, right? And I mean, you could probably do it, let's say up here, uh, between the uh, G and the D string. And then D and A. That's pretty cool, especially when you palm mute it. That sounds, that sounds awesome, I like that. So there's all kinds of like, you know, n interesting ways to play the pentatonic scale in a way that doesn't sound like your typical pentatonic licks, you know? Right there is A and low E, right? So I'm still doing the barring thing, right? So I'm with my first finger, my index finger, I'm barring two strings, right? Let's say, for example, the uh, barring the B and the G strings and then pulling off from 15 on B over to 12 and then picking 12 on the G string. And then if I'm doing it here in this position, it's uh, pulling off from 14 to 12 on the G string and then playing 12 on the D string. And then same same basic sequence, right? As we go as we go up. So it's cool. Like th there's no limit to how you can actually experiment and try different things, you know. But of course, we all know this is like the most familiar sounding one, right? So that's that's that one repeater. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, this is another one that would be very familiar on a lot of great records, and it goes like this. And so this one is, is pretty much limited to the top strings, right? So from like the G string to the B string or the B string to the high E string because of the bend that's involved. So what's happening here is with your second finger, you can take the uh, 14th fret of the G string and you're giving it a whole step bend. So you're bending from the pitch of the 14th fret to the 16th fret. That's the distance of a whole step. That's at least what you're shooting for. Because the bend happens fast, Right, it's, it, don't worry so much about being super precise on where you're bending because, because it happens so fast, we're talking about building pentatonic speed after all, right? It's more of an effect, it's more of a cool sound, right? And because you're playing it in, in rapid succession, it almost sounds like a slide at the same time. You know? So it's more of an effect, right? So don't worry like too much about whether you're hitting, let's say, the a whole step bend or a half step bend, let's say, right? but you're gonna wanna aim for a whole step bend. So you're doing that bend, and then your first finger is gonna grab the 12th fret of the B string. You're gonna pick that, and then you're gonna grab the 15th fret with your third finger on the B string, and then do a pull off. So it's also three moves, I think, right? One, two, no, four moves. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's the whole lick. Right? The whole lick is that. And as far as picking, it's all downstrokes, I think. Yeah, so we're doing a downstroke on that first bend on the 14th fret, then a downstroke on the 12th fret of B, and then a downstroke when we hit the 15th fret for the pull off. And so this is just repeated, right? So again, just like with the last lick, you gotta get it slow and perfect at first. And once you get the individual lick down, then you want to start playing it in succession, right? Repeating it without stopping. 
And even if it's painfully slow in the beginning, that's all right. What's most important is precision. If you start focusing on precision at a slow tempo and you work on gradually increasing your speed, that's how you're gonna maintain that precision and that accuracy as your speed increases. Because the worst thing you could do is get a little overzealous. And believe me, I know, I know it's exciting, it's fun, and we're impatient as guitar players. We're super impatient, right? But we really gotta think long term, right? What we don't wanna end up is being like a sloppy, let's say, shred guitar player or like sloppy guitar player in general, right? And if you're taking my lessons, I'm not gonna let that happen. Not on my watch, right? So I'm gonna really stress that you focus on slow and perfect in the beginning, okay? And understand that by doing that, by, by prioritizing that in the beginning, you're gonna get all that out of the way. So you don't have to like backtrack after building bad habits where you're like, let's say you play fast, but it's not very clear and precise, it's kind of sloppy. It's gonna be a much more, much bigger pain to go backwards and undo those bad habits and then rebuild the good ones. So it's best to start by building the good habits right from the jump, okay? So once again, we're bending from the 14th fret of the G string and then 12 and then 15 to 12 pull off on the B string. I right, remember four moves, one, two, three, four. And so you just repeat that. And you can actually do the same thing on the B and the high E string. So you would actually bend from the 15th fret of the B string and then do 12th fret on high E and then 15th fret pull off to 12 on high E. The same four moves, right? One, two, three, four. In fact, it might make it, if you wanna build speed, it might make it even quicker if you use your pinky to pull off from 15 to 12. At least when it gets to the point where you're building up speed and you want a little bit more, um, you know, you want more efficiency from your fretting hand. All right, now, I mean, I, you know, if you want to try them on the lower strings, you could, but it wouldn't really, it doesn't really, it doesn't really work as well, you know. So it's definitely between the, uh, the, with the top strings, right? G to B and then B to high E, those work great. And let's see, one last repeating, like here's a good one. It's actually really similar to the first one that we learned, just kind of flipped a little bit. So what we're doing is we're still barring on the 12th fret of the high E string and the B string, okay? But what we're doing is we're actually playing the 12th fret on the high E first, and then we're playing the 15th fret pulling off to 12 on the B string. And the way this is going, as far as picking, it's down stroke, right? And then up stroke, pull off. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so one more time, down, up, pull off to 12. Still three moves, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, it's like a triplet, right? Triple it, triple it, triple it. And so unlike this, you know, we're actually doing the pull off on, the, on a different string, right? And remember, this is the whole leg right here. That's the whole leg, that right there. So you do that. Right? That one, you know, when you get real fast with it, it can get real smooth sounding, it's cool. And if we were to do the same thing, let's say, um, you know, let's say barring, it sounds like, you know what that sounds like? That sounds like Figaro, 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 Figaro. <laughs> I love it. Right, so if you're barring the 12th fret of the B and the, and, and the G strings, right? You'd be picking the 12th fret on B and then pull off from 14 to 12 on G. Same picking uh, thing, right? So you're going down, up, down, up, down, right? You know, I mean like, so it's fun to try them out in, in different, you know, fragments of the uh, pentatonic scale, right? Particularly this, this pattern here. So try them out and if you find something that you like, you know, it doesn't matter if it's popular or not, right? It's, it's music is subjective. It's all a matter of taste. So if let's say you love the, the Figaro one, right? That actually kind of sounds, that also sounds like, um, 
that part in uh, Blinded by the Light, right? For all I know, that could very well be exactly how they played it. You know, you never know. But you know, it's, it's always fun to find little Easter eggs like that. Oh, and by the way, if you're getting value out of this lesson, do me a favor and hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel if you'd like to see more lessons just like this one. And with that out of the way, let's get back to it. All right, so those are some examples of repeater licks. Now let's take a look at some pentatonic sequences. All right, sequences. Those are basically just groupings of notes of a certain number, right? And what they allow us to do is to actually traverse the entire scale pattern using those sequences in a way that makes it a little less linear, right? So we're actually able to get more mileage out of the scale. And it's even a bit simpler and it's actually a lot easier to navigate the scale as opposed to the pressure of just trying to rapidly go up and down when you're dealing with a two note per string pattern. So let's take, for example, this hammer on sequence here. That's I think six notes, right? We'd be going one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. It's a very legato, you know, hammer on kind of thing. So we would basically be ascending the scale in, in a sequence of six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so how we're doing this, is 12th fret, right? We start there and then we hammer on to the 15th fret on the low E string. And then we hammer on from 12 to 14 on A and then 12, 14 on D. Now that's our sequence. That's not the whole thing because we're going to traverse the whole scale with this, right? So we essentially are going to go up one sequence and then we're going to go back down a string and then go up another sequence. So we go back down to the A string and we're going. So we're still doing six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, and then we go back up a string now to the D string. One, two, three, four, five, six. See how we're just walking up the scale essentially, but we're doing it in a way that makes it a little more interesting and, and cool sounding, right? So we're seriously just walking up the scale in groupings of six notes using this hammer on thing, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Going up the scale makes it, you know, sound pretty cool compared to just. It's like this. It's pretty cool, right? When we just follow that sequence, just going up the scale in that sequence of six notes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And so you're just picking each string once, right? Because you're doing that hammer on. And you know, I'm just doing downstrokes, right? And there's a way you can actually descend the scale using that same sequence. So it's a little more challenging when we're descending because of the pull offs, but we're essentially going like this, right? So 15 pull off to 12 on high E, 15 pull off to 12 on B, 14 pull off to 12 on G. That's our first sequence going down. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You can use your pinky or your ring finger as far as uh, reaching over to the 15th fret. And then we're now we're going to go up a string and then down the sequence of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can go up and down the whole thing like this. And when you increase the speed, it sounds pretty cool. Now, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I can't stress enough, just like with everything else, start slow and steady. Focus on perfection, right? Accuracy, precision. And that's going to be slow in the beginning and you want to just gradually increase the speed. So if you're starting at like this snail's pace, that's totally okay. As long as you're focused on playing it perfectly, right? where you're really thinking about that sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? And as you get more comfortable with it, you're going to think about it less and less and you're just going to do it. Right? And that's when the speed comes in. Here's another sequence of six notes that's pretty cool. It goes like this. Okay, let's break this down. So what's happening, the, the initial sequence, like I said, is six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're doing sextuplets again, right? So this first sequence, so I like to start this on the A string. You know, it's just 
you get more than enough content, you know, going up from the A string to the high E string with it, right? And of course, because this is one of those uh, sequences that kind of climbs up and down slightly, right? And then you just continue climbing up the sequence. It just has this really cool kind of cascading effect of the notes. So what we're doing is we're pulling off from 14 to 12 on the A string and then hammering on back to 14. So it's like, ba -da -da, ba -da -da, right? And if you have to scat out loud, right? Ba -da -da, just to help give it some a rhythmic center, right? Like by all means do that. I do it all the time. Ba -da -da, and then we have 12th fret on D, right? So ba -da -da -da. So you see how like kind of sort of singing it, it, it really helps kind of center it so you know what what sort of like rhythm to aim for with it, right? Ba -da -da -da. Then you have <laughs> 14th fret on the A string and then 12 on D again. So ba -da 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 -da. Ba -da 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 -da. All right, so if you have to sing that to yourself over and over again to just get that sequence down. Ba -da 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 -da. So remember, pull off and then hammer on between 14 and 12 on the A string and then 12 to 14 from the D in the uh, A string, and then back to 12, right? So six, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's our sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, you guessed it, we're gonna go up the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So let's walk it up together. So we have this first one. Then once we've done that sixth note, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We're now ready to move on to the next sequence. So our first finger is gonna be on the 12th fret of the D string. We're ready for our third finger to come in and, and do the hammer on pull off thing from the 14th fret to the 12th fret on the D string now. Right, like that, ba da da. And then 12 on G, 14 on D, back to 12 on G. Ba da 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 da. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we keep it moving. Now we, we pick up where we left off with our first finger here on the 12th fret of the G string. Now 14th fret, hammer on and pull off. Right, da 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 da. One, two, three, four, five, six. So hammer on pull off on G from uh, 14 to 12. And then 12 on B. 14 on G, 12 on B. And then from here, we're now reaching over to the 15th fret of the B string. Ba -da 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 -da, right? So we're doing pull off, hammer on pull off, or pull off and hammer on from the 15th fret to the 12th fret on the B string. And then 12th fret on high E, 15th fret on B, 12th fret on high E. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's how we walk up the scale using this sort of cascading sextuplet sequence, right? So we'd be going one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 right? So it's great because it's actually, it may seem tough, but we really have to understand this. We're just taking one lick or one sequence and we're just adapting it. Once you learn that one sequence, you've pretty much done all the hard work. Now it just comes to adapting it to the new positions on the fretboard and of course it's going to take some time, but really you just have to know that you're just repeating this sequence of six notes over and over and over again, right? You can even do it in the same place. If you wanted to make that a repeater lick, right? Let's see if we did it here. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's kind of tough actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> ah. That's cool, I'm actually, I'm gonna work on that. That's pretty cool, that would make a pretty cool lick by itself. Anyway, so to recap, and, and as you know, you can always go back and rewatch any part of the video that you need to until you get it down. You can watch as many times as you want. This is a free lesson after all. So we're doing this 16th, or sorry, not 16th, uh, sixth note sequence, starting on the A string, and then we work our way up. And if you wanted to descend it, works kind of the same way, just inversely, right? So if let's say we were to start here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're working backwards, so it takes a little bit of extra thought here. We start, uh, let's say, on the 12th fret on the high E string, and then 15th fret to 12 on B, and then we're gonna do another 15th fret to 12th fret on B. So we have, so we're doing two consecutive pull-offs. These, these two pull-offs here. One, two, right? 
to get that six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so 12th fret on B. And then two pull-offs from 14 to 12 on G. And then 14th fret on D. And then. Right, and it, you know, if you're familiar enough with the pentatonic pattern, you can figure out, right, you can adapt this sequence, right? You know, so it's actually a great way to ascend and descend in a way that's cool and cascading. It's something I hear a lot of keyboard players do too when they're playing pentatonic stuff. And for one final sequence, let's take a look at this one. This is something that Eric Johnson does, who's one of my all-time favorite guitar players. And the way he plays pentatonics is just ugh, amazing, right? And one thing he loves to do are sequences of five notes. And this one is, is really, in particular, is pretty special. It's something that uh, he especially likes to do when he's descending a pentatonic um, lick, right? let's say, or a pentatonic scale. There's some economy picking involved, so we're going we're gonna to dive into that. So the lick looks something like this. All right, so let's take a look at this five note sequence. So we're descending the pattern and we're going in, in sequences of five. So we're going one, two, three, four, five. But we're essentially just descending the scale normally, right? Like in a linear way, but we're cutting it off at five, five notes, right? So one, two, three, four, five. And then from here, we're going to go up a string and then descend another sequence of five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You know, and then he likes to do that octave thing where he ends it on that root note and then finds its octave. This sounds so cool, right? So it's it's like this, right? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it, it's again just five notes. All we got, we gotta first start focusing on the sequence, getting familiarized with that pattern, and it'll start to feel right. And we just think about, we're just taking that five note sequence and just doing it in succession, right? So we're gonna start with a pull off from the 15th fret to the 12th fret on the B string, or sorry, the high E string, right? And then pull off from 15 to, uh, uh, 15 to 12 on B, and then 14th fret on G. That's our fifth note, one, two, three, four, five. And so how I'm picking this, right? I'm starting with a downstroke, but then once I move up to the B string, it's an upstroke. And then it's an upstroke, I think, let's see, yeah, it's an upstroke on the 14th fret on the G string. So it's down, up, up, down, up, up. That's the picking pattern. Down, up, up. Remember that. This is the economy picking part. Down, up, up. And then once we're doing that upstroke on that last note, that fifth note of the sequence, then we start the next sequence on a downstroke. So we'd start the 15th fret on the B string, pulling off to 12 on a downstroke down and then up up right one two three four five so down up up and then once we've reached that that final that fifth note in the sequence we're now going we're starting it over up you know up a string so now on the 14th fret of the g string pulling off to 12 right so down stroke up stroke from 14 pulling off to 12 on d and then upstroke on the 14th fret of the A string. So it's like down, up, up. And it just keeps going. Then when we start the sequence over on the D string, down, up, up. So real slow, the picking pattern descending the whole scale, right? Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. So remember that whole five note sequence, the picking pattern is down, up, up. Remember that. Memorize that. Solidify it into the confines of your brain. Right, so let's take a look at ways that you can do this in a way that's fluid, right? Because something like, you know, some, some sequences you can like bar with your finger, but if you're not comfortable with that, let's explore ways that you can do it, you know, where it's just using individual fingers, right? So starting here, pretty straightforward. You can use your, you know, uh, ring finger to your first finger doing the, ha uh, the pull-offs from 15 to 12 on B and the high E strings. And then your second finger here is gonna be on the 14th fret of the G string. And then, let's see, how, let, let, let me just kind of explore this a little bit. Yeah, we can do this. 
Okay, yeah, let's do this, right? This might make it easier for you. We're gonna do 15 pull off to 12, right? With ring finger and the index finger. And then pull off from uh, the uh, uh, 14 to 12th fret on G string with uh, ring and index finger. And then when we get to the fifth note, use your second finger here instead of your third finger. Because if you use your third finger, you have to start barring as you're going up those cascades, right? Or going down them, but going up, up a string. So what you can do is just play the fifth note, let's say in this sequence, starting on the B string. That fifth note, one, two, three, four, five, with your second finger so that your third finger is freed up to jump right in and start the next sequence, one, two, three, four, five. And then you're using your second finger again to conclude the next sequence, and then one, two, three, four, five. All right, so that way you can go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now see what my, what my second finger is doing? It's helping me out so I don't have to do this. That barring part, especially between the uh, G and the A strings, right? So this way I can just make it smoother. Just remember the picking pattern. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna play it one more time real fast. So see, another reason why it's important to focus on precision as you're gradually building up speed so that when you want to play it fast, it's still clear just like that. So when you take these repeating licks and these sequences and you would shed them starting slowly and gradually building up speed, you are going to see massive results in your progress when it comes to playing fast rock minor pentatonic licks. Just remember, focus on incremental growth and it really, really helps to document your progress. So take a video of yourself on day one when it's probably not gonna be very good and that's okay. So we're talking about progress here. We're not worried about where we're at now, we're worried about where we're gonna be, all right? And then by the end of, let's say the first week, take the same video after having worked on it every day, a little bit every day, you'll notice a big difference and then week by week, you'll start to notice huge differences. And while you're on track to becoming a bona fide pentatonic master of disaster that's gonna take your riffs and make them faster, think about how cool it's gonna be when you're able to play like that over any musical key. And if you wanna learn the trick to instantly soloing in any key, I happen to have just the thing for you. Of course, it's that free gift I was telling you about and voila. This is yet another free lesson that I'm gifting you on how to solo in any key. It's gonna show you in the simplest, most concise way possible how to take your pentatonic licks and apply them to any key all over that dang fretboard. Make sure that you click here so you can claim your free copy or check that link in the description box. So much of playing fast on guitar really revolves around what we just talked about today. And once you understand that, it takes a lot of the pressure out of the way and leaves room for the important stuff, like having fun.